Greetings, everyone. This is Collectibles Euphoria presenting the D23 exclusive limited edition Jasmine doll, only made available during the 2015 D23 Expo in Anaheim, California. This 17 inch limited edition, one of 500 Jasmine doll, is presented donning her iconic red slave outfit seen in the Disney animated film Aladdin. This outfit was well known to the fans of the film when it was shown during the time Jafar took control of Agrabah for a short time, forcing Jasmine to be his slave, wearing a red tube top and harem pants adorned with gold accessories, which is the inspiration for this outfit recently released by Disney, exclusive to D23 members who attended the expo. Considered as one of the most coveted limited edition doll to date ever created due to its D23 exclusivity, this doll sure hits the spot of the heart of avid collectors wanting to own this version of Jasmine. Stay tuned! Disney's take for this limited edition doll packaging had stayed true to their original design opting for a white collector's box adorned with Arabic-inspired frame of majority teal-colored border with golden filigree patterns and swirls and sporadic gem designs outlining the entire window-style box. The top left-hand corner has the Disney Store logo on it and the corners of the lower borders even has a golden chain design and right in the middle of it is where you can find Jasmine's name with a description of limited edition of one of 500 on top of it. The silver sticker of D23 logo is located on the lower right hand corner indicating its exclusivity. Each side of the box has the similar border design showing Jasmine's figure and outfit on both sides as well as the top portion of the box. The white part of the box also has white reflective decals decorating the entire box which is hard to capture on camera but is seen throughout the box, creating a beautiful 3D-like effect on the overall box. The box itself is identical to the teal version of Jasmine except for the limited edition of 500 of this red version versus the 5000 of the teal version. The back of the box shows more Arabic filigree designs and gems, and the beautiful border design is continued throughout the back of the box as well. Disney's Aladdin is printed in golden bold letters, indicating the movie that serves as the inspiration for this doll. And right below it is the synopsis of this doll, written in English, and down below is its French translation. It also stated that the Certificate of Authenticity and Display Stand are included. This doll retailed at $119.95, though the price on my tag has already been removed. The box itself stands at about 19 inches in height, close to 11 inches in length, and a little over 5.5 inches in width. The plastic casing protecting the box also has white filigree patterns with the exact design pattern framing the borders of the outer casing, and right below it also has the same letterings and information seen on the outer front case. Removing the outer case and the plastic casing is easy. Light on the box and pull the outer casing first, followed by the plastic casing. Right below it is a gap between the innermost case and the box itself, which is the location of the Certificate of Authenticity. The certificate is teal in color, which is an interesting take to this version, since it could have been colored red to identify itself from the teal version of Jasmine, which felt like a reprinted certificate of the teal Jasmine doll. My version is a low number of 13 out of 500 which is so cool. Though it wouldn't have any bearing with its price point, it is still cool to own a low number version considering how limited this version release is. The backdrop chosen is a scenic view of Agrabah, which was originally a scene during nighttime due to the visible stars. 
However, for the purpose of design, the color was changed to a golden lighting creating a very beautiful contrast to the red outfit Jasmine is wearing. The doll itself is breathtaking and I couldn't decide which one really highlights the beauty of the doll since the overall concept and design was a perfect mixture of beautiful use of red and gold which suited Jasmine's physical feature perfectly. Starting off from Jasmine's coiffure, her beautiful, luscious, long black tresses were elegantly twisted on each sides of her head by dividing it initially into three sections, with her hair parted in the middle, then was held in a high twisted ponytail style with some portions of her hair securing it. Then from the high ponytail, Jasmine's hair was divided again into two sections then elegantly twisted the hair all the way down, then secured by two black elastics. Right before reaching the end of the hair, the two sections were held together and sprayed or gelled to tightly secure the locks of her hair, making the ends of the hair hard to touch while the rest of the hair is soft and silky. The twisted braid is elegant but nothing new since this hairstyle is a modified version of Fawn's hairstyle as seen in her designer version. Nonetheless, the hairstyle really fitted Jasmine's overall look and is a nice take on her hairstyle choice. She wears a golden tiara with red gems intricately placed on the sculpted details of the tiara. The cut is similar to Aurora's limited edition doll tiara though the similarity ends there since Aurora's tiara has a higher peak on the top section with different sculpted details as opposed to Jasmine's which appears to have a lower peak and different sculpted details embellished with gems. Her face sculpt is really stunning, capturing Jasmine's facial features real well. She has dark, thick eyebrows elegantly arched and painted. She wears a gold eyeshadow on her eyelids, then fades into a golden brown for a smoky eye effect. Her rooted eyelashes are long and thick, and are situated just on the middle to the outer corners of the eye, highlighting the shape of her eyes beautifully. She is side glancing up to her left, and her brown eyes gave life to her pretty face, Though the iris of the eyes has less details comparing to the teal Jasmine's eyes based from the pictures, she wears a faint blush which is correctly executed in the makeup industry since a dark lipstick should be worn with a light blush as to not create an overly done look. I am not a fan of the shiny face that Disney had been implementing onto the recently released dolls though it really doesn't bring down the quality of this doll since her overall makeup is still top-notch. Though as a person who enjoys makeup application, it would be much preferable to add highlights just on the high portion of her cheeks, top portion of the upper lips, chin, and bridge of the nose, as opposed to highlighting her entire face, which for some people creates a greasy-like appearance. The dark berry red lipstick is a perfect choice for her lips since it adds a level of maturity and seduction to her face and adds up to her sophisticated appearance. She wears a golden dangling earrings embellished with three red gems of varying sizes. The shape of the circular part of the earring is accurate in the movie, though the diamond shape was not really the exact shape Jasmine was seen wearing in the film. Though I like this version better due to its gem embellishment. She wears a golden tiara which in the film was created by Jafar from the shackles she was wearing as an offer to be his queen. The sculpt of her necklace is very similar to Aurora's necklace, though again it has a different sculpted details and has red gems intricately placed in the design. The tiara is a different take to the original ones seen in the film since it was shown as a plain gold accessory with different cut design, but this version suited her appearance perfectly well with all the sculpted details and gems on it. The necklace was an addition since Jasmine was not wearing one on this part of the film. Her tube top has a heart-shaped neckline with multicolored drum beads lining up in the neckline area going up to the sleeve strap. 
The drum beads are a combination of iridescent purple and gold color, which adds a fine touch to the design of the crop top. The bodice has a mixture of gold and silver threads, with a ruby set in a golden frame placed in the middle of the bodice, sewn to the scarlet satin fabric. It also has small golden gems sporadically placed in the bodice. It has a golden brown hem lining the edge of the bodice, and its chosen fabric and color helps tie up its design to the scarlet harem pants and overskirt. It also has a golden chain dangling from the bodice, and she has a visible ruby belly button piercing. Her golden accessories also includes a cobra armband placed on her left arm, though in the movie, the armband is actually seen on her right arm. The golden cobra's detail is intricately sculpted to replicate the scales around the body, and the appearance of the cobra appears like it is ready to strike. Jasmine has multiple bangles, which are sculpted as one piece, though it appears like she has six bangles on each side of her forearm, with ruby gems placed on some of the bangles to avoid clashing the looks with too much gems. Jasmine has a distinct hourglass figure and possess a beautiful Arabian light skin tone which matches perfectly well on the scarlet and gold outfit. The harem pants has the same golden brown hem outlining the waist area cut in a V-shaped pattern with its hem extending all the way down to the edge of the overskirt. The hems on the lower edge of the overskirt has a wider fold comparing to the hems extending from the waistline down to the bottom of the overskirt. The overskirt itself is made of two layers of satin fabric with the topmost layer embellished with golden rhinestones placed mostly inside the swirls of the serigraph or silk screen print golden patterns continuously seen throughout the overskirt. Below the screen print, it has embroidery Arabic patterns of gold and silver threads extending all throughout the remaining fabric of the overskirt, with golden rhinestones also sporadically placed throughout the embroidery. The inner layer is just made to protect and hide all the stitching details made on the topmost layer to give it a nice finished look. The classic full harem pants are made of the same satin fabric with no embellishments placed to give it a defined simple look since the patterns and details on the overskirt is enough to highlight the overall feature of the lower garment itself. Another interesting take in the design is that the lower end of the harem pants has a velcro on it instead of a garter to keep the caught in ankle design. By opening it, it will help free up the legs to expose her single-jointed knee, and this addition will be probably useful for out-of-box collectors when trying to free up her legs from the pants. Though not visible from the camera, the back of the top and pants also has velcro to help securing her outfit in place. She was also given her golden slipper-like shoes with the tips that curl inward, which is movie accurate, and I do love the fact that it helps tie up her overall appearance. This doll also comes with a display stand with a clear plastic clamp seen on the waistline, and the base itself is also made of clear plastic with a metal stand connecting the base to the clamp. For those who are wondering how big this doll is comparing to its classic doll counterpart, this is how they look like standing beside each other. This D23 exclusive limited edition Jasmine doll is definitely the cream of the crop of the limited edition dolls ever released due to all the intricate details that went through her outfit. Collectors have different opinions on which part they like the most, and in all honesty, it is truly hard to choose, considering all the embellishment placed and the overall work effort and design put into it to complete this exquisitely designed doll. If I were to pick one, I would definitely say the design choice on the overskirt, since this feature is what really sets it apart from the teal jasmine with all its golden embellishments, silk screen prints, and embroidery, which stands out elegantly but at the same time is not overwhelming. 
Should you be interested in purchasing this doll, the timing is crucial since it is no longer available at the Disney Store in Disneyland. You have to resort to eBay for purchasing this doll. Initially, this doll is getting sold at around $700 range. Now it is being sold over $800 to over $900. The longer you wait, the more expensive this doll gets. It is truly a magnificently regal doll worthy of its exclusivity and a definite must-have for avid collectors of the line of the 17-inch limited edition Disney dolls, Aladdin fans, and Disney enthusiasts in general. Please watch my review of the next limited edition doll, Teal Jasmine, once released by Disney, and other limited edition dolls to be posted for review. Have a magical day. Bye!